Well, let's do this. Let's, um, let's, as God's ministering to her, let's, let's do this. Let's uh, receive Holy Communion because here's why. You say, well, you know what? I have a need. One of the greatest ways, and those of you that are watching at home for your needs to be met, is to come to the table of the Lamb. I mean, it's, it's where you get your healing. In fact, before we put up, or before we receive Holy Communion, man, there's a strong anointing. I want to share just one quick scripture with you. And uh, ushers, you can, go ahead, you can go ahead and be seated. Ushers, you can go ahead and begin to serve the people. And then we're going to worship for a minute. But I just want to share one scripture. And then we're going to partake together. And that's this, John chapter 6. I want you to see this. And those of you that are joining by way of uh, your home, or wherever you're watching, Yeshua said something so amazing. And, uh, you know, I'm a big supplement guy. I like taking supplements, and I have been for years, and I, and I would highly recommend it. Listen, it's better than some things that we put in our bodies, right? But, but supplements, you know, God made natural things that aid us in our health, and it's important. So, you know, that you take the right stuff. Don't just, you know, take something because it's the latest, you know, Amazon advertisement or whatever. You got to be careful with that. They're putting, what are they putting? Snake urine and, and lizard urine and this new diet stuff. And people are wondering why. You know, they're losing weight, but they're doing this. You got to be careful. I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. But, but in all seriousness, you know, just don't. I'm talking about natural supplements. But we often forget that there is something that supersedes any vitamin, any meal you know, any herb, and it's, it's this communion meal. Look at what Jesus said in John 6. He said it in verse 54 and verse 55, and I would like for them to put it up uh, if we can. So, whoever eats my flesh, Jesus is speaking, and drinks my blood, has eternal life. And I'll raise them up at the last thing. I look at verse 55. This is, uh, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. But then I wanted to go back, um, maybe it's verse 53, where he says, He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has my life in them. And that's what you have to understand, okay? Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. But he that eats my flesh and drinks my blood, okay, has eternal life or has my life in him. So when you are about to receive this, you are literally going to receive what is called the Zoe life of God, the God kind of life. And it's when you call on the name of the Lord. How many of you, you call on the name of the Lord, you ask Jesus to come in your heart to be saved. That word saved is not just forgiveness of sin and eternal life. It literally means healing, wholeness, health, long life, protection, preservation, rescue, deliverance, prosperity. So it's a full package that you get. And that's the same way when you take of Jesus's body and blood is what we're going to do here you receive that life in you and you know what that life does man it touches your body and it causes your cells of your body to respond to the zoe the god kind of life amen so i want you to know that you're not just taking some ceremonial thing it's not some little wafer and some little cup man this is the body and the blood of our lord that's what he said he didn't say it represents he said this is and then he tells you the benefit you're going to have his life and i just told you what kind of life that you need to claim you need to celebrate you need to remind yourself and thank god that you have it all right ushers are we are we already done well then let's just let's just go for it man wow i did too much explaining maybe huh <laughs> okay you know, I like when the scripture says, as often as you do this, people say, well, how often should I? Well, how often do you want? Sometimes I've taken communion twice a day, you know? I don't know. I think maybe I've done it at least twice a day. Maybe I've done it more. I just don't remember. But I, I love doing it. I, I, I receive all the time because I love the intimacy that I feel with God. And also, I love how it just makes the devil mad as hell, right? Because it's that's why it's a table prepared in the presence of your enemies it reminds the devil of his defeat he has no power over you he has no power over your body he has no power over your health and your finances so i want you to hold up he said this is my body all right which was broken i like to just kind of do that i like to just kind of break it i don't know it's already been broken but and i want you to say this say lord i receive of your body all of the rights and all of the privileges 
of my covenant. I have your life when I receive your body. And so I thank you for that life, that abundant life, the God kind of life. I thank you for health. I thank you for wholeness. I thank you I'm healed. I thank you I'm well. I thank you I'm blessed. I thank you I'm prospered. I thank you I'm protected, preserved, rescued, delivered. I'm blessed. And I receive of your body and that life. All right, you know what also goes with this? All right, he said, He that drinks of my blood has my life in him. You know, there's one thing that I always look for whenever I plead the blood of Yeshua is it's a legal right. It's like in the court of heaven when I say, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over my life, over my wife, my boys, my dogs, my parents, my staff and church family, partners. I believe that God looks and says, all right, it's granted. But it's also a reminder to the devil. He knows the night of the Passover. He couldn't touch the Israeli people when lamb's blood was put upon their house. But he also has never forgotten the Lamb of God whose blood was shed that gave you rights here in the earth that the devil is off limits. He can't touch you. And you have to live that way. But there's something so connected to the blood. You know what it is? It's the Spirit of God. And we have to understand that any time that a blood sacrifice was acceptable in the Old Testament to God, he would send a witness that he approved of their offering, their blood sacrifice. He would send fire. He would send a cloud, right? There would be some kind of visible sign. Why do you think 50 days after Jesus was crucified, the final and last sacrifice the greatest sacrifice ever offered to the Father. 50 days later, he sends fire. Because Pentecost and speaking in tongues and being filled with the Holy Spirit was proof that Jesus' blood is worthy. And so you have a right, as you partake of this, to not walk around tired and fatigued, lonely and in despair. You have a right to have the visible presence of God upon your life. I walk into places and I've had people say, man, I don't know what it is, but, but did, did you come by yourself? I said, why? Well, because I feel something. No, uh, it's God. It's God. Amen? And so I want you to have that on your life. So I want you to hold, it up, hold this up. Say, Lord, I am forgiven of every and all iniquity. I'm healed of all disease. I am redeemed because of this blood from every and all destruction I am crowned with your tender mercy and your loving kindness my youth is renewed like the eagle because my mouth has been satisfied with good things so I receive of your blood and as a result I will feel and I will walk in the power and the presence of the precious, blessed Holy Spirit. Let's partake together. Thank you, Lord. Amen? That's worth a shout, isn't it? Why don't we go ahead and stand our feet and give God a big shout. Amen. Come on, let's shout. Shout unto God. Amen. Praise the Lord.